Hey everyone, Goran from Letify Me here and in this tutorial I want to talk to you about how to color grade Red's IPP2 footage inside the DaVinci Resolve. The footage I'll be using today was kindly provided by the guys at Raw Film. Raw Film is a subscription-based platform offering premium stock footage shot exclusively on Red cameras. If you need footage for your project, make sure you check them out at raw.film. Since our last tutorial about color grading Red's IPP2 footage in Premiere Pro, we got a bunch of emails from you guys asking us to do the same in DaVinci Resolve, so here we are. Um, before we get into it, I suggest you go through the uh, video that we did about Premiere Pro. It's linked in the description. Uh, it will uh, get you familiar with some of the concepts of working with IPP2 footage and in general uh, about working with uh, wide uh, gamut uh, footage. So I suggest you have a look at it before uh, you have a look at this tutorial. So as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, the basics of working with IPP2 footage are to stay for as long as possible in the IPP2 workflow uh, or basically in the red, white, gamut, RGB uh, color space and the log 3G10 gamma. The reason for that is that when you're working with IPP2 footage and you take and you make all your color decisions in the red white gamut RGB color space later on when you want to change the output transform of your footage for example from rec 709 to rec 2020 for an output on HDR TV sets you will not have to regrade your footage and all your color decisions will translate correctly to this new color space because all of your color decisions took place in red, white, gamut, RGB. So that's the most important thing. And that's the, uh, uh, that's the very basics of working with IPP2 footage in DaVinci Resolve. So how do we do that? Uh, so the first thing I have here on my timeline, a bunch of uh, clips shot with red cameras. Some of them are shot with Epic, some Dragons, some uh, Helium cameras, and we will treat all of them as IPP2. So to do so, uh, we will go first to the uh, camera tab and under the code using, we will select clip, which allows us to uh, decode uh, each of these clips per clip basis. So we can change the settings for each clip and have uh, a setting of our own or uh, choose a setting that we want for each and every clip on our timeline. So to interpret this footage as IPP2, what we want to uh, do is under color si science, we want to make sure that we are using IPP2. Under color space, we want to make sure that we are using the red, white, gamut RGB. Uh, and under the gamma curve, we want to make sure that we are using the log 3G10, which is the gamma curve of the IPP2 uh, pipeline of the IPP2 workflow. And when we select these settings, our clip will be interpreted as IPP2 and from this point on we are ready to start grading it. Now if you want to apply these settings on other clips what you would do is use the shift key on your keyboard to select a list of clips and then use a uh, click uh, on use settings button and uh, these settings will be copied to other clips and they would be interpreted as IPP2 as well. One thing you should notice is that the color temperature, tint, exposure, adjustment, and any, any other setting that uh, you have here will be uh, transformed, will be copied to other clips. So uh, you might want to uh, go and make sure that the white balance and the settings are uh, correct for the other clips if you are using this, uh, this feature. Now, there are many ways to work with IPP2 footage in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, there are many different techniques that you could use. Uh, I will go uh, through, I will show uh, one way to do it, uh, a way which I think is the simpl simplest. Uh, but of course, there are many other ways that you could do. Uh, and as long as you are using the correct workflow or the correct order of actions, you should be fine. So uh, let's get back to this clip. 
And the first thing that I would want to do is create a serial node here on which I will apply a log conversion so I can properly view this footage. In this case, I will be going to uh, Rec 709. So we'll go to um, LUTs, 3D LUTs, uh, Lotify Me, Log Conversion LUTs, and we will select the uh, red white gamut. Let me move myself out of the way. Sorry about that. Um, so LUTs, 3D LUTs, Lotify Me. Um, log conversion LUTs and we will be using the red white gamut RGB log 3G10 to Rec 709. So once we do that we will have this footage converted into Rec 709 and we can view it uh, properly. We are using the uh, red white gamut log 3G10 to Rec 709 log conversion LUT because these are the settings that we selected uh, here. Now uh, what we want to make sure uh, to make sure that our workflow is correct and that we are using the IPP2 uh, footage to uh, its maximum potential is to make sure all of our color grading decisions take place before this log uh, conversion. So uh, what I will do is create three serial nodes which will be before the log conversion here and I will use these to uh, grade my footage. Now, this is not a color grading tutorial. I will not go into great detail into how to color grade a footage. Uh, I will just uh, explain the basics of the workflow. So let's create two additional serial nodes. Uh, the first one, I'll label it as primary because this will be the serial node that I will reserve for my primary corrections. Uh, the second one will be reserved for my LUTs. Uh, so uh, let's label it LUTs. And I'll write here IPP2 because it's very important that you use IPP2 flavor of the LUTs from the package. And I'll demonstrate what happens if you don't. And uh, this one will be reserved for my secondary uh corrections uh which uh will basically be any changes required after applying uh the lot or anything of uh, that kind so uh, i'll begin by applying a creative lot uh, on this node here uh, so to do so i'll go again into the package lotify me again i have to move myself out of the way um, so Lotify me uh, and we go into the red IPP2 folder. From here, I'll go to teal and orange and I will use the Marston LUT. So that's the IPP2 flavor of the LUT applied on this footage. And this is the result that we get when we apply that uh, specific LUT. Now, if I were to use a regular Rec 709 tailored LUT, uh, what will happen, uh, let me show you, is I'll go into standard Rec 709 LUTs and we'll select teal and orange and we'll use the same Marston LUT. So as you can see, the result is very different and it doesn't look good. And the reason for that is because our log conversion is happening at the very end of the pipeline, all these settings, all these corrections, all our color uh, decisions are taking place in the red, white, gamut RGB uh, color space, which is a wide, uh, wide gamut RGB color space. And they uh, and uh, the, our footage is using a logarithmic uh, gamma encoding, and therefore the Rec 709 LUTs do not work properly here. So to be able to use the IPP2 to its full extent, we need to use the uh, IPP2 flavor of the LUTs from the package. So again, uh, we'll go to red IPP2, then teal and orange. And in this case, we'll go to use the Marston uh, LUT, which is uh, looking appropriately for, uh, for this footage, obviously, as this is an IPP2 footage. So let me move myself here, back here. So if we have a look at this in full screen, um, this is the before 
and this is the after you can see that this lot as is works pretty okay on this footage this is the uh, rec 709 conversion and this is the uh this is the lot so it looks pretty fine uh it doesn't require many changes but just for demonstration purposes i'll do just some uh simple changes here and to do so i will select the first serial node so it's important to make your primary corrections of course before the log conversion but usually you do want to make them also before applying the creative lut so on the first serial node we'll be uh, making some primary corrections and in this case i will be using the primary wheels just to slightly increase the gamma and lower uh, the gain uh we could increase overall saturation perhaps to something like this and then on the third adjustment layer on our secondary corrections i could probably use something like hue versus saturation for example uh to select the uh, range of reds and slightly decrease the saturation of the skin tone but leave the saturation of other colors uh, pretty much uh, as is so again if we have a look at this in full screen uh, this is the before and this is the uh, after so you remember uh, previously i said that you uh, could interpret all of your footage in the same way uh like this uh like this clip so what we'll do is we'll select uh this one here as well go to uh camera raw tab we'll click use settings and you will see that uh this footage now uh, will be interpreted as red ipp2 uh and to quickly copy these settings from this clip to this one what we'll do is grab a still and then we'll go to this clip and now uh, we have our look so-called saved here and when you hover over that uh, look you will get a preview of what you are about uh, to get uh, and if we drag and drop this here uh, you can see the uh, our grade is copied and uh this is what we get and what we basically did is copied this look from this clip here to uh this one now this is not related uh this specific tip is not related to ipp uh too specifically it uh, you can use it with any workflow that you want uh i just wanted to show a quick way how you could apply the same grade to different clips so you don't have to repeat uh the actions that you do uh and in this case what we did is simply copy the color grade from that other clip to uh this one and we uh have a nice uh looking result again to do uh to to, to do this thing on other clips uh on other uh footage again we would select the uh, clip that is interpreted as ipp2 then uh using the either command or control or shift depending on if you want to make a selection of everything up to the clip that you're clicking or only a, an individual clip so if i want to select only one individual clip i will be using the command or control but if you want to select all of the clips up to this point you can use the shift and it will select all of them so again uh, we'll select this one and select this one uh, use settings this will copy our ipp2 uh, settings from this clip to this one and if we have a look at it uh, we can see that it looks well as an ipp2 footage and now we'll copy and paste the settings that we did to this one uh, as well now you can see that this clearly doesn't look good and that's because this footage was shot under tungsten lightning uh and you rem and if you remember when i told you that when you do uh, when you use the use settings when you copy the settings from one clip to another it will copy the uh, white balance settings as well as other settings to this clip so to correct this uh what we want to do is change the white balance back to what it should be so in this case let's try 3800 and you will see immediately that uh, this looks uh, better 
and of course we could make some further adjustments to this footage for example um, let's reset this and let's lower the gain a bit maybe a lift tiny little bit uh, open up the gamma we could increase the saturation of this clip and now this looks better and matches uh, this clip more uh, more nicely so here here we have the after and this is the before and that's about that so if you like this tutorial uh please make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button so you get a notification when we release a new tutorial uh, i hope you like this one and see you bye bye